Hello everyone, Toon Amp here, I'm tuned up and I'm glad you tuned in. Great news! Saturday morning cartoons and weekday morning cartoons are coming back to network television. Kind of. Sort of. Not really. So I'm looking at the latest animation news and everything. I'm on Nick and Morn and something comes up in my news feed. Kids click broadcast kids TV block launch schedule. This means that cartoons are coming back to broadcast TV, right? Well, not necessarily in a way that people think. You gotta remember, when people think of broadcast TV, they automatically think of ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and the CW. This block is actually a syndicated package. Which means, yeah, you're still going to have to deal with Litten on all five of those networks, except for Fox. Fox has its own thing. I believe it's called Exploration Station or something like that. And Kids Click isn't exactly a syndicated package either. Kids Click is owned by a company called Sinclair. If you don't know what Sinclair is, Sinclair is a media group that owns a bunch of stations around the country. It doesn't matter who it is, if it's CBS... ABC, Fox, CW, My Network Television. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something. I think it's NBC. Even independent stations. And more than likely, the Kids Click will actually be seen on these stations. Probably not directly on those stations, but maybe in one of the digital sub-channels that goes along with the stations. You know, Antenna TV, or Bounce, or something along those lines. Because... Heaven forbid, kids' cartoons interrupt the news. But there is a problem with that. The problem is Sinclair stations don't really cover the entire USA. I myself live in Indiana, and there's not a Sinclair station that's even remotely close to me. But luckily Sinclair stations are not the only stations that have this block. Remember those sub-channels I've talked about? Well, one of them is called This TV. Now, this is a station that is all over the United States, but again, it's a substation, which means it's kind of buried, but it will have the Kids Click block as well. The problem is, you have to have a network that actually carries the station, and again, I have no access to the station. So yeah, Saturday morning and weekday morning cartoons are back. Oh, and this is going to be on Sunday morning too, but you either have to search for it, or pray that it's in your area. But the creators of this block are actually kind of smart as well, because they do realize that it's not going to reach every household. Not on broadcast television anyway. So they also have it set up to stream online. On your computer, on your smartphones, even on the Roku. Which is good for reaching those kids who don't necessarily have the block in their area. So the question is, is trying to bring back cartoons on broadcast television a smart idea? Economically wise, not really. Because you do have that limited range for not being on one of the big broadcast networks. But the thing is, they're trying to hit an audience that doesn't have cable channels like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or Disney. And to a lesser extent, Discovery Family or Kubo or whatever. So there is a market out there. It's a very small market, mind you. But there is still a market. When I say small market, if you remember Vortex back in, I want to say 2012, 2013, something like that. Vortex's highest performing show was Dragon Ball Z Kai, which had around 1 million views. And the worst series that really did anything was Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, which hovered around the 300,000 view mark. So when I say the audience is small, I mean the audience is small. Although it's like saying the Toonami audience is small because Toonami gets those kinds of ratings too. Although, not as bad as Zexel. But again, there is an audience for it. So the question is now, what kind of programming does Kids Click have? And is it enough to keep kids tuned in? Let me tell you this. This isn't the first time that somebody tried to bring back Saturday morning cartoons. In 2015, a group called Broadcast Partners tried to do this too. In fact, they might still be around, but I have yet to see any network that actually carries this crap. Broadcast Partners had the audacity to think that if it's a cartoon, kids will watch it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Because Broadcast Partners thought that kids would settle. Since when do kids actually settle? Yes, when we are younger, we'll watch any old crap, 
but we are still very particular about what crap we watch. When we get older, the crap that we watch as little kids, well, we soon realize that we are above this. Well, broadcast partners, well, this is what they gave kids to watch. The old 1950s, 60s, 70s Archies, Bullwinkle, Casper Scare School, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, Lassie, Mr. Magoo, and George of the Jungle. And I'm not talking about the classic George of the Jungle. I'm talking about the George of the Jungle that was on Cartoon Network. When that is your most recent cartoon, and you're showing cartoons from the 1950s and 1960s, you think kids are idiots that will watch anything. Either that or you're relying too much on nostalgia. Especially when it comes to He-Man. I mean, who are you trying to appeal to? My generation that grew up with this? Or the current generation? But nostalgia doesn't work for kids! Because kids have no nostalgia. These cartoon blocks aren't made for kids of the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s. They're not. You have to try to appeal to kids these days. And for some reason, Broadcast Partners doesn't understand that. But enough with Broadcast Partners. I'm not even sure if they're still around. But Kids Click starts on July 1st, 2017. So we're going to take a look at their TV schedule. And what do they have? Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and Disney XD backwash. Okay, that's being a little too mean. But most of the shows are from those networks. So we'll talk about the obvious problem. And that is Sonic X. I don't know how many people were Sonic the Hedgehog fans. But this series has been overplayed way too much. It was fine when it first started on 4Kids TV. About, I want to say, is it 15 years now? And it was fine while it was during its first run. And it was fine for the first two years in reruns because it wasn't overdoing it. Until four kids started losing all their programming and had nothing left but Yu-Gi-Oh! and Sonic X. Guess what show they overplayed? They did that starting in the summer 2010. And really all the way through to the end of Vortex. They overplayed it for the two years that 4Kids TV was Toonzai, and then they overplayed it for the two years that it was Vortex. And it wasn't necessarily a bad show, it wasn't necessarily a good show, it was an okay show. And I have a lot of problems with Sonic X because of the unnecessary humans. My god. And I always have problems with unnecessary humans, you know what they are. They are the characters that are Usually kids who are introduced to these characters that are from another planet or another world or not necessarily been around humans and they're used as guides but man most of the time these guys are idiots or stale. You have your Spike Wick Wickies, your April O'Neils, you have your random kid from Mummies Alive, Creepy Crawlers, you know who they are. They don't help the story along, they're just there to be punched in the face. At least the 2012 version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles approved upon the unnecessary human. So, yeah, I'm not impressed that Sonic X is back. Okay, and I'll admit that most of these I have not seen. You have the 2013 version of Max Steel, Rocket Monkeys. You have Super 4, which apparently is new to the States. But then you also have something called Robocop Alpha Commando. And from the looks of the title sequence, which is the best title sequence ever, Robocop Alpha Commando is a pretty old show. I think 90s old. Also look up the theme song on YouTube. Not for the theme song itself, but read the comments. They are hilarious. Uh, you also have Pac-Man The Ghostly Adventures, Pink Panther and Pals, and another new show called Scary Larry, but the one that stands out the most is Miraculous, the tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. All the shippers rejoice because this is going to be on broadcast television. Okay, let's get a few things straight about my feelings about this series. 
First off, I watch this series alongside Magicka Modica. Don't ever do that. Don't ever watch the most bland, generic Magical Girls series next to the most groundbreaking, innovative Magical Girls series of all time. Now, I'm going to get a lot of hate for it, but I find Miraculous Ladybug average. It doesn't improve on the Magical Girl genre. All the characters are idiots. And a lot of the problems could be solved if you just kill off Chloe. Because, boy, that character causes more problems than Hawk Moth. But how can the main character recognize who's the villain of the week is right off the bat, but can't figure out who Cat Noir is? Hi, Jimmy. I'm getting to know you for this week. Jimmy gets mad. Hey, ah, I'm the villain. Jimmy John! I don't know, don't judge me for my uninspired character names. Oh, I know, I know. Arr, I'm Sub Meat Man. Jimmy, is that you? No. Yeah, it's you. Hey, I'm Cat Noir. I'm the guy you have a crush on. Who are you again? I'm the kid that you have a crush on. I sit in front of you in class. I don't know who you are. Here, let me take my mask off. Adrian! Now let me put my mask back on. I have no clue who you are. Every character is an idiot! And the only reason why this show is popular to begin with is because of the shipping. Do people draw characters other than Cat Noir and Ladybug? No! Do they draw pictures of Ladybug's middle-aged friend? Seriously, I thought her best friend was Marinette's mom when I first saw the first episode. Do people draw pictures of Hawk Moth? Or the random people that Chloe pissed off. No, it's all about Ladybug and Cat Noir. This is how good this series is when nobody draws pictures of the show outside of Miranette and Cat Noir. But, again, it's the big show that's on this block. Well, there is Angry Birds, and those are the Angry Birds shorts that were on, I want to say, uh, Sony's mobile media devices or something. Those are really good. I actually got a few laughs out of those cartoons. Now, I went off on a tangent there a couple times, but let's talk about the lineup itself. The lineup is kind of strong. And like I said, there's a couple backwash shows from other networks, but at least they put effort on getting current cartoons, unlike broadcast partners. And like I said, there is a need for it for those kids who don't have the options of watching Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, or Disney XD. But there is also the problem that these aren't exactly the best cartoons to choose from. But the best cartoons to choose from from those networks are owned by those networks. I mean, the Steven Universe's, the Wee Bear Bears, Gravity Falls, Milo's Murphy's Law, The Loud House, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Those are owned by the networks and they're not about to let those go. So, again, Kids Click has to make do. Will it succeed? Well, we have to wait and see. I want to see it's been about eight years since we've actually had ever put in Saturday mornings. Oh, but tune in. What about four kids and Vortex? What about them? The last good year for four kids was the fall of 2008 and the spring of 2009. That was before the whole bankruptcy thing. ABC Saturday morning. The last good year for that was in 2008. Kids WB, last good year was 2008. And getting back to ABC, after 2008, it was nothing but reruns except for Power Rangers. They spent two years in reruns before they went to Lytton. Fox Kids, NBC, CBS, they outsourced their blocks. In 2008, Kids WB or CW outsourced their blocks. And yeah, for kids and Saban kept Saturday mornings alive for about six years, which is honestly maybe three years longer than it should have been. In all reality, original Saturday morning cartoons ended in 2008, 2009. So while I don't have high hopes for this block, I'm hoping it does well. I'm hoping it catches its audience. And again, it's an option that for the past two or three years, Kids Without Cable is an option that they have now. 
and maybe broadcast partners, but I'm not really sure if that's an actual option. Again, don't treat kids like idiots. So, Kids Click TV. You can find them on kidsclicktv.com. Check your local listings. The weekday lineup is from 6 to 9 a.m. And the weekend lineup is from 7 to 10 a.m. And again, if it's not on in your area, you can always stream it online or check it out on Roku. I keep wanting to refer to an avatar character with that. I'm Too Damp. I'm glad you tuned in. This has been Food for Thought. And it's time for me to tune out.